Welcome to the Mini Dragon Warrior Project version 9 demo. Today we are going a little bit of a different route because there's no code to demo exactly. What I'm going to show you is uh, something else, something kind of fun, and that is I've been building basically the ability to have loaded maps, maps that can morph between each other and so forth. Now I kind of want to start building toward the demo a little bit, at least from the map side of things and really look at, okay, how do I build a tile map? So there's this tool called Tiled, uh, which is really neat. It's a map editor and it's pretty standard. So I thought, okay, I will use that because I thought about actually building my own map editor and I'm like, ah, maybe let's not do that. Uh, otherwise this could take forever. So started building with Tiled and imported my tile set here, which is very cool. And actually started building out uh, kind of the rough version of what my tile map might look like. Now, this is uh, just very fun and uh, spelled out the word Dargan, which is like dragon, but not. Uh, so um, maybe this will turn into Dargan Quest, who knows. Uh, but just trying to have a little fun with this and really just design you know, a very rudimentary version of a full world. So you imagine a world in a game like this tends to be a large ocean with a large landmass, sort of like our world, right? And so just for simplicity's sake, we've got a ocean with a rectangular world, and then we've got these mountain ranges. So you've got this mountain range here that will probably not be able to walk through, but maybe these hills you can. And then you've got, you know, trees and you've got these little towns and like a castle. So those are maybe things that'll become portal points between things and so on and so forth. Um, but with something like tiled, I can actually design very easily and very quickly, uh, not necessarily always well, but you can design things like, oh, hey, look, we've got, um, maybe we want some of these trees and we'll just draw those on, right? That's a lot easier than editing a file by hand, right? And then this will get saved and outputted. So this is kind of the design, but then we'll add the collision layer as well. So with this, what I've actually done is I've set up a separate file that has a collision layer and or a separate layer here. And what that is, is I really just have kind of a zero one tile map setup going on here. So you've got, you know, a zero tile and a one. So the zero tile you can't see, the one you can. Uh, with um, tiled, you can actually set the opacity. So I could set it to 100%, then you can really see that. But it's cool that you can actually set it to a, uh, a different alpha level, a different opacity. So in this, then you can see kind of my collision layer layered over top, where I'm setting up a collision layer boundary around all of this so you know you can't walk through the water but then um, also the mountain range and again this would be really obnoxious to do by hand it is very simple to do in tiled so that is uh, what tiled can actually get me now in terms of the output you can look at there's a couple different ways it can output so we've got a JSON file here that it outputs to um, and you really just have to, you know, run export in tiled, super easy. But it at least gives you this nice JSON file. And then there is uh, another way that you can output as uh, basically a CSV. Now there's kind of pros and cons to each of these. What's nice though about the CSV output is it's actually indexing at zero. So right now there's nothing on painted on the map at all. These are all just like nothing. So it's like a zero or it's technically a negative one cause there's no value there. I'd probably want them to be zero, but it's fine. Uh, whereas in the JSON, uh, it actually indexes. Uh, so it actually is calling the negative one zero, which is a little weird, but then it's actually calling the other ones uh, in the collision map 74 and the reason being that it actually has a first um, ID of 73. So essentially the first ID would be like if I put um, an empty thing in there, that'd be like 73 and 74. So there's pros and cons to how it actually outputs the uh, export. But um, the fact that I can do this very quickly means that kind of the next step will likely be to take these exports 
and then have like a Ruby code uh, little script or something that will process them and turn them into whatever I want my final version to be. So maybe they stay with a CSV file. Maybe I have, you know, just a imported Ruby file. Maybe it's something else. I really don't know yet. Cause again, this is a very simple demo, but it's cool that this tiled thing even exists because it's such a time saver and even having to write a couple little scripts to change the format and make it, you know, a format that I like working with, that is still mountains easier than uh, otherwise. So that's kind of version nine. I know it's not really code in the game, but this is definitely something that impacts the next version. So there we go, version nine.